again it's Cliff here from Down Under. In this video I want to talk about chuck, three jaw chuck accuracy and stability. How you can correct issues with uh, chuck stiffness and chuck accuracy. Chuck accuracy in terms of concentricity of, or run out and chuck accuracy in terms of angular accuracy of your chuck. These are problems with the chuck jaws and the fit of the jaws and the body of the chuck and I'll go into how we can fix our chucks. Um, also you might not be aware that if you have an older lathe with an older chuck or you have a low cost lathe and chuck that you've got real issues with your chuck jaws. That in reality what's happening when you're machining is that the chuck jaws are either bell mouthed or are rack racking around like that. And that stops you from holding the work securely and doing heavy machining such as parting and roughing. And you're wondering why you're getting chatter and all sorts of problems. I'll go into that as well. Cheers. Over the years I've been asked to come in and help people with their lathe machining problems. And quite often I've noticed that they have a problem with their chuck. Their three jaw chuck is either worn bell mouthed like this or the chuck jaws are loose in the body. And it's an invisible issue that they are unaware of, but it's causing major problems of inaccuracy and part stability. What's happening is that the work is moving around and they don't realize it, and they can't take heavy cuts, do precision machining, or do any heavy parting without major chatter issues. So I'll go into how you can correct this problem with your older or inaccurate chuck in this video. Many years ago I bought a beautiful old Triumph Colchester, a Colchester Triumph lathe, a lathe about the size of this lathe from a guy who sold it because he said it was worn out and he couldn't do accurate machining any longer with it and he had replaced it with a modern new Chinese lathe. When I got the Colchester home I thought well I'm picking that there'll be something wrong with some local component and it will be able to be reconditioned. And sure enough, when I checked out the chuck, the jaws had worn bell mouthed and you couldn't hold the work securely. What would happen is that the work would move in the chuck and in an invisible way would be rattling around and you couldn't take heavy cuts or do parting without major problems with accuracy and chatter. So once I'd done this procedure of re-grinding the jaws, I then had a perfectly good, accurate Colchester Triumph that I had for many years. All right, well, let's talk a little bit about lathe chuck accuracy, how accurately the lathe chuck can hold the work. We, want, we, we obviously want it to be concentric, so it's not got run out in a radial direction, but we also need to be concerned about alignment, angular alignment. We don't want it to rotate exaggerated, running out. It needs to hold the work parallel to the spindle in an angular perspective and also on center concentric that way. So there's two things to be concerned about with a lathe chuck. Will it hold the work concentric and will it hold it in alignment, in correct angular alignment, that is parallel to the spindle center line of the lathe. Well, it's easy enough to dial a chuck in concentric by adjusting the chuck on its back plate. I've talked about this in several videos where you can have clearance on the location spigot between the chuck and its back plate and just nip up the screws and then put in a precision diameter, indicate on that diameter and float the whole chuck until it is perfectly concentric and then tighten up the screws, then you have a concentric chuck. But that's not the whole problem solved. You still have axial alignment or misalignment errors and they are typically caused by errors in the chuck jaw and the fit of the chuck jaw in the chuck body. So while we may have dialed in the chuck to be concentric, 
we still have issues with angular alignment. And so obviously chuck jaws operate in T-slots and there has to be a certain amount of clearance for the T-slots to operate freely. And if you're like most of us, you have a relatively low cost chuck and so it's made to fairly loose tolerances in order to get the price down. And so we have a little bit too much clearance in the T-slot. And when we tighten the part up, typically the jaws will rack around. Here's an example. This is a pretty average quality chuck. And you can see there, I'm getting nearly 0.1 of a millimeter. Between extremes, that's four thou racking around inside the T-slot and plus you get a bit of spring and compression and you could easily get a 5 thou displacement here in the angular alignment of one of the jaws. Now this can cause all sorts of problems with this angular alignment, the parallelness of the work to the spindle center line. It also causes the jaws to bell mouth out so it's on, the jaws are only really holding the work down one end because it's not parallel to the, to the part. So you're pinching, for example, at the heel, but you've got very little grip at the toe of the, th of the three jaw. So uh, there's all these sorts of errors to consider. In addition to accuracy, I want to talk about chuck stability, chuck security. How well your chuck holds your work. Are you able to do heavy machining such as parting? If you have an older lathe uh, with an older chuck or you have a low cost lathe with a low cost chuck, there's a high chance you've got problems with your chuck. Your three jaw chuck may not be holding your work and your stable, the chuck jaws may be rocking and when you're machining, you might not realize it, but the work is racking around like that. I'm not sure how clear that is on the video, but what happens at an uh, invisible level is that the work is floating around within the chuck and chuck jaws, and you can't do precision machining, and you can't do heavy machining, such as parting and roughing and so on, without a lot of chatter and problems. So one of the standard cures for this uh, inaccuracy in the jaws slopping around is to set up a tool post grinder in your lathe, lock up the jaws on a ring and grind the inside of the jaws and that way you theoretically generate a very accurate concentric axially aligned inside edge of your jaws. And I remember learning this many years ago but I wasn't happy with it because in theory you're racking the jaws the wrong way. By gripping on the jaws like that and tightening the jaws outward, you're actually racking the jaws so that they close in at the toe, which when you've ground it means you've bell-mouthed the jaws. A ring is commonly used like that because you need the grinding wheel to grind inside the jaws and the ring gets out the way of the jaws. But it's not correct because you're gripping the jaws in the wrong direction. You need to machine a groove here in the end of the jaws and have a ring with a spigot on it that drops down into the end of the jaws so that when you tighten it up you're tightening as if you're tightening on an OD, on an outside diameter, but you are providing clearance to grind the inside of the jaws. So we can tighten that down on that ring because it has a groove in the end of it. So now we're representing the stresses of holding the part it will cause the jaws to spring open in a bell mouth position and when we grind the ID will grind out of the heel and this will mean that when we tighten the jaws on the work the first point of contact is on the toe of the jaw the, this, this end of the jaw and then it springs into parallel and holds the work in an axial alignment and also parallel to a parallel part.
Just to reiterate that, when we have the ring on the end of the jaws, we tighten them up as if we're tightening them on an OD of a part, and the slack or the slop in the jaws causes the jaws to close on an angle like that. And when we grind it, we grind that portion out. So now the jaws will contact on the tip at the end first, then they will rack round into a parallel position and lock parallel along the length of the shaft. So I have a small amount of float between the chuck body and the back plate of all of my chucks so that I can adjust them concentric by loosening these cap screws or bolts from the front and uh, tapping with a piece of copper from the top until it is concentric. Usually I'm setting the work to get the work concentric and then I'll tighten those bolts up but in this case before grinding the chuck jaws I want the body to be concentric so that I grind the chuck jaws with the body running true and the chuck jaws running true. I've got a couple of different rings for different size chucks. Here's one for my 6 inch chuck. Just machine with carbide very carefully a groove in the end of the jaws and a ring with a spigot on it that goes into that groove for the size of chuck jaw and uh, internal grinding wheel tool post grinder that you have clearance for that. I'm all ready to grind now. It's best to use a grinding wheel. I've seen some videos of people machining the inside of the jaws with carbide, but you really don't want to remove more than the minimum amount of material. They're usually case hardened, and you don't want to be reducing the depth of the case hardening any more than is necessary. You're only taking a couple of thou out, and uh, a grinding wheel is best for that. It's more accurate and it removes less material. You can use a die grinder mounted up in some way. There's all sorts of temporary bench grinding, uh, sorry, tool post grinding systems that you can use. It doesn't have to be anything flash um, because you're generating the accuracy. it's important to clean the internals of the chuck before you do a job like that for example the scroll and the scroll on the teeth of the jaws and it's a good idea to always tighten with the same pinion um, key and that way the errors of racking of the scroll for example are the same each time and um, you're minimizing the amount of variables by doing that well that only took a couple of thou to get those jaws concentric and accurate and gripping parallel again now. Um, I did this when the lathe was new and when the chuck was new about 10 or 15 years ago when I bought this lathe and I uh, got the chuck accurate by this process and so 10 or 15 years it's worn out a couple of thou. So it shows you it's worth doing it if you want to do really accurate work not just the concentricity, the radial concentricity, but it's also the axial alignment, the angular alignment of the jaws that is important. So over the years of use, the jaws have become a little bit more sloppy in their T-slots, and now this grinding has corrected for that. So now when I tighten the jaws down on a parallel shaft, it first comes in contact at this end, at the nose or the toe of the jaws if you like and then when you tighten it up 
it then the jaws rack around and come in full contact along the parallel length of the part and so we are concentric in both directions um, it'll gradually wear again slightly as the jaws become a little more sloppy and it will need to be done, done again in a few more years probably of course this isn't a complete fix for all chuck errors um, but it does get it a lot closer than it would otherwise be there's also errors in the scroll and errors in the t-slot and jaw fit that vary from one adjustment position to another slightly and so you might get rid of 90% of the errors like this but nothing is 100% all right let's put that bit of ground shaft back in and give it a test so this is a the dial indicator with hundredths of a millimeter graduation so it's about half a thou it's pretty good there and let's see what it's like for angular alignment yep that's pretty good too there's still tiny errors some of them could be in the shaft some of them could be just dial indicator spring but you'll never get perfection with a thing like a three jaw chuck but that's pretty close i was wondering what the correct terms were for defining uh, part misalignment in the chuck i saw this from rex nord coupling specialists and probably shaft misalignment is the same as work misalignment in the chuck um, so they call it parallel misalignment when it's just a radial run out a concentricity and angular misalignment when it's an angular run out misalignment so that the center line of the work is not parallel with the center line of the spindle or the headstock of the lathe thanks for watching that video if you found it useful Feel free to like and subscribe. Cheers.